Welcome back. Playboy founder Hugh Hefner revealed today that he wants to keep the iconic enterprise all to himself. He's offering to buy out existing shareholders and take Playboy private. With more on what this could mean for Playboy and Hefner, we're joined by Jeff Swiston of DDB Worldwide Marketing, as well as the author of The Brand Glossary. So, Jeff, I haven't seen any comment from uh, Hugh, or I was going to say Hef, but he's not actually a personal friend. I haven't seen anything from <laughs> Mr. Hefner yet um, on why he's doing this. Have you heard any speculation of what he's trying to do? Well, I think he has to step in and do something, not only as a shareholder, but someone who started this iconic brand in 1953. Let's face it, it's been languishing for a few years. It's gone through uh, some changes in management and, and uh, missteps in strategic direction. Uh, so I think someone had to do something, and I guess it makes sense for, uh, for Hugh to do it himself. Now, the issue here is that shareholders have lost 60% of their value over the last five years. And under no scenario was any management team, including his own daughter, able to turn and reverse the trend that the magazine saw. Lack of advertising, concern about the brand as a public company. First of all, isn't it true, and let's might as well just deal with this elephant that's in the room. Pornography has been remarkably successful on the internet. Much of it's free. It's basically slaughtered the brand. Isn't that what, what's happened here? I think that's uh, what's happened to a large degree and also just the fact that their main property is a magazine and you know whether uh, any magazine's been hammered in the last few years in terms of its format, uh, loss of advertising revenue and general subscription. But I think the issue here, and this is the opportunity and, and hopefully this is what they're thinking about, is not to think of themselves in the competitive set of pure pornography because they've lost that battle as you pointed out. Um, Playboy I think is a lifestyle brand, however you want to define it. And I think they need to redirect the brand away from just the connotation of pornography uh, to a connotation of how to live one's life well, uh, once again, depending upon how you uh, define that. But, and so there's many different directions that this brand can take. It doesn't have to be a uh, centerfold competing with ubiquitous uh, pornography on the web. So do you think that uh, he's got some sort of a grand plan to, you know, first of all, bring attention to the magazine by doing this buyback and then do something different with the content or this lifestyle brand or, or some kind of a plan? Well, one would hope so because otherwise this is going to be a very short-term bump in their stock price or in the interest in the company overall. Uh, once again, you know, the, the, the main property has been the magazine. I think they need to move away from that. They really have one brand, and it's Playboy. And I think this is uh, one of been their big missed opportunity over the last 10 to 20 years is that brands like these branch out. They create sub-brands to go after different segments of the market. And once again, I do believe that Playboy is a lifestyle brand, and maybe they could have PB Life, PB Health, uh, something like that. Uh, if they don't have a master plan for resurrecting and uh, resegmenting the brand's interests, then I, I don't understand this financial play at all because I believe it's a dying property. Uh, certainly people will still want to license Playboy. It does have some fun associations, um, but it needs a long-term plan. Jeff, what makes me a little skeptical about this, which is basically an LBO, it's a leveraged buyout at the end of the day, is that if this brand was so valuable, why have the management teams that have been running it for the last 20 years been so brain dead not to be able to capitalize on it in the way you suggest? Why wouldn't have anybody tried to do this for the last decade at least? And they were not successful and it continued to just go down in value. I, I think they're riding that one uh, square on the uh, uh, Boston Consulting Matrix and they're riding it as a cash cow. And I think that's silly. Um, you know, this is almost sort of like the Elvis Presley brand, which has done well. Even this last year, the Michael Jackson brand. If you can think of it in along those terms on how you keep injecting new relevance into the brand, even though it's associated perhaps in its heyday of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, I think uh, the Playboy brand can be made extremely relevant today uh, and can be taken into new directions and conquering new platforms um, and new channels. Uh, but you're right, it, it is just a question mark. What, what has happened with management? And maybe this is uh, Hugh Hefner's last chance. So we're already hearing that uh, the CEO of Penthouse is talking about uh, putting together some type of a competing bid. Can you see other uh, media conglomerates or other people wanting to do something with Playboy? 
Well, I, you know what? I think if anything, if Penthouse does is somehow win this uh, contest and, and, and purchase it, you'll, you'll see the, the loss of one of those brands probably because they'll end up folding the magazines together for the sake of advertising and subscription. And I think that's a lost opportunity and really minimizes any long-term growth or value in the company. Whether or not other media co properties are going to step in, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think it would be more of anything a co-branding opportunity potentially with, uh, you know, a, a hotel chain or casino that, you know, sort of caters to that audience. Um, but I really can't see a large media company stepping in because Playboy has not kept itself up to date. So there's really nothing there in terms of progressive innovation other than everything that's been associated with it since the 50s. Jeff, one last question. One of the number one assets on the balance sheet of Playboy is the Playboy Mansion itself. Hugh doesn't own it. The company does. He rents it and he lives there. And that is so much ingrained into the brand, the grotto where Diane used to work in her youth. <laughs> These are the places where the brand was built. If they buy this asset in an LBO, do you think they're going to just sell that asset off and clean up their debt? That's what I would do. Does that taint the brand? I don't think so. I think that's probably a smart financial move to, to make. Um, whether or not that's going to impact the brand long term, I'm not sure. You know, I, I'm going to date us. You know, I, I, we're a, at least over 40. I don't think a 25-year-old uh, and someone where they really need to be catering to is thinking about a physical place like the mansion. They're not. They're not living in a physical world as much anymore. So I don't think that's a big risk. If it helps them put away some debt, uh, invest in their future, that might be a wise move. All right. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And by the way, I didn't ever work at the Playboy Mansion. Now I'm going to have to sue you. You look just as good as somebody <laughs> I thought looked like you working in the grotto. All right.